Hello everyone in peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time. Let us say a quality time of fun. Uh, yesterday we were, you know, we were live. Uh, we saw some people posting that there is a debate between a person, his name is Daniel and uh, David, which we know, David, most of you. For me, I don't really, I mean, those debate are not debate because as long there's a moderator and there's uh, 10 time for a 10 minute for me, 10 minute for him, people go prepare for a topic and they get some information from the internet, they put it in the front of them in the computer and they will be reading a paper. So just pause the paper and don't, no, there's no need for a debate. Secondly, a debate should be between two people who they are qualified in the education, which means you cannot debate a rabbit. If you are, let us say, a goat, it have to be between two rabbit or two goat or two human or two smart or two idiots. But someone who do not know his religion and yet he want to debate about his religion and our belief. That would be very funny. And today we will show you why those Muslims are not qualified to talk about their religion. You see, I did not uh, watch the you know the debate. I just uh, uh, moved for like little bit in the introduction. Let me see where this guy start talking, and I will show you how right away we will start laughing. I mean, this guy is just a certified idiot, and he's a kid. And by the way, I'm not insulting him, but this is who he is. Listen carefully and see what he will say. Where he start talking? Let us see. Talk is cheap. Proving what we say is different. I want to let you know, first, welcome. We're glad you're here no matter what walk of life you are from. And also want to let you know, we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics here at Modern Day Debate. And with that, thrilled to have you here as well, Dan. Okay, go ahead, my friend. What is this? Go, go. I mean, where is this guy coming from? Modern science debate. What about the women and children? Were they also killed? The soldiers say, no, we didn't kill them. Then a man. Well, hold on. We skipped. Thanks for hosting and thanks to David and thank you to everyone watching. The debate today is about violence and intolerance, Christianity versus Islam. Let me say right off the bat that yes, Islam has violence and Islam is not tolerant of every belief and way of life. And that's a good thing as I'll explain. But my problem with David Wood and other Christian apologists is that they are inconsistent and dishonest. I'm going to focus on three main examples of this inconsistency. The first is what we can call the Old Testament question. Imagine there was a hadith that described Muslim soldiers coming back from battle and reporting to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu peace be upon him. The soldiers report that they were victorious in battle and had killed all the enemy men. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked sternly, what about the women and children? Were they also killed? The soldiers say, no, we didn't kill them. Then imagine that the Prophet وسلم, gets enraged at this and condemns the soldiers for not exterminating all the women and children. Now imagine that if a hadith like this existed, David Wood would have no hesitation in citing it over and over again on his channel, making a big... I mean, the debate is over. You are certified donkey. And I will show you the hadith in two seconds. And then everybody will be laughing at you. You are a certified donkey. So obviously this guy did not know his religion. <laughs> because if you know the, your religion, you will not start the debate with this. It's challenging to find such a hadith. You donkey. And by the way, they say to me, why you use the word donkey? Can I find a better word? He started the first two seconds in his argument, challenging. Imagine if David Wood can find such a hadith. This is the start, you donkey. 
This is the start of your challenge. Imagine if David Wood can find such a hadith. Should I hang up and go? We are done. Because he is challenging David Wood to find such a hadith. The Christian and the Muslim, they have an argument. And the day before I start, I'm going to say to David Wood. Imagine that David Wood, he hear somebody saying that the Prophet asked his father, Do you kill the women and the children? And they said no. And he said, the Prophet said, What? You did not kill the women and children? Imagine that David Wood, he gets a hadith. You idiot. This is the guy when a debate us, challenging us to find the hadith says that the prophet he encouraged them to kill their children. Yes, he did. He, they were asking him when we are going to attack the, 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 the enemies, we are killing their women and their children. Is that right? He said they are from them, which means he encouraged them. He said, don't worry about it. They are from them, so kill them. And we would not even start two seconds of the, 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 the speech. The first two seconds of your speech is a purple. And why we need to go to the hadith? Isn't it the Quran your idiot said that Allah, he sent Musa to learn from a guy, his name is Al-Khadr. <laughs> and this guy, brother, he saw a child who is, he fear, he fear, brother, that he will not be good to his parents. Okay. So he slaughtered him. So why he need to imagine that there is a something in the religion of Islam, it says kill their children. When you are a prophet to claim that this is wisdom to, to kill a Muslim child, this child is a Muslim child, he's not even a Christian child. And Allah, brother, in the Quran, explain why the Khadr he killed the youth or the boy. Because simply, he his parents were people of faith, so they are Muslims. Okay, but isn't Muhammad, he says, everyone is born as a Muslim. So this person is 100% Muslim. He's born of a Muslim family. His parents are Muslims. Isn't your prophet, he says, that the child, he is going to be a Christian or a, he's born as a, as a Muslim by nature, by fitrah. And then his parents will make him a Jew or a Christian or a Muslim. Here we go, the parents are Muslim. So even that proved Muhammad to be a fraud. Because if the parents who make you a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim, the parents are faithful. So how come the child is not? And now the child, he did not do anything yet. He did not become a person who is, have no faith. He's just a plane in the street. So the guy, he took him, he slashed his head, he smashed his head with the wall or in the floor, as it says in the interpretation. Why? Because we feared. We feared. He is not even sure that he would grieve them by abstaining on rebellion. Imagine David would he see something the prophet said like this. <laughs> so imagine this guy was debating me, and it is not David Wood who is talking to him. It is me. The debate is over. We just showed you from the hadith, and this is authentic, Sahih Muslim and Sahih al-Bukhari. And now we are showing you from the Quran. We do not even need to continue. And by the way, when I played, I skipped this part. I did not even hear it, so I just heard this one.
because I don't have time really to, you know, so I, I was moving the video to see when this guy, he, you know, like I, I go to the video and I look at, at the, like when his lips start moving in the, like what happened now, you know, when his lips start moving in the video, then I click play. I did not hear this part. I just heard this part. And I cannot believe it that he is so stupid claiming to be a person who have knowledge of his religion. And yet he's a challenging David Wood to bring such a hadith imagine if david would he knew such a hadith imagine we do not need to imagine we will leave the imagination to your prophet who he imagined that he had sex but in fact he did not who he imagined that he went to seven heaven but his wife she said he did not leave the room who he imagined that he is bewitched but in fact he is just a crazy person we don't need to imagine. We will leave the imagination to your prophet who he imagined that your God will make your penis endless. And I'm sure a person like you will be proud, at least in the front of his people, to have such a penis. Because this is the proof that you are following the true God. It is the size of your penis. And I don't know how you're going to use it if it is endless. And your wife is next to you. How you will have sex with her? You will make a U-turn? And what the point of this huge endless size? Are we going to use it as a pipe line for oil or internet cable? So we do not need to imagine Abdul. We will leave the imagination to a stupid person like you. Who he claim and the Muslim they think that he is he have something to say. But the second you start opening your mouth, frogs start coming out. And I am closing the sink. Thanks for hosting and thanks to David and thank you to everyone watching. The debate today is about violence and intolerance, Christianity versus Islam. Let me say right off the bat that yes, Islam has violence and Islam is not tolerant of every belief and way of life. And that's a good thing, as I'll explain. But my problem with David Wood and other Christian apologists is that they are inconsistent and dishonest. I like it when you say inconsistent. I'm going to play a video for you. Are you ready, Mr. Inconsistent? Oh, hold on. We have a commercial break. The director, he just told me. Commercial break. Hello, babies. If you would like to support Christian Prince, please go to Patreon and show your support www.patreon.com slash christian prince we thank you all for your kindly support and enjoy the video <laughs> the end of the commercial <laughs> So the Christians are inconsistent, brother. They are inconsistent. Let us examine that. I mean, if I want to make a statement about every every word you say, we will spend the coming century to finish this video. I mean, what's wrong with you? You are just a dump, dump, a dump machine. You walk, you don't walk, you do poo poo. The poo, poo is dripping from you. The Christians, the, my problem with the Christians, uh, apologists, and someone like David Wood, and a Christian apologist, that they are inconsistent. Uh, uh, Sheikh, tell us something. They reported that Imam Malik, Ibn Anas, was approached by a man of the people of innovation. So he said, stop, Imam. Stop. Let me debate with you. Let me debate with you. So Imam Malik had some time on his... Uh, uh, Imam Malik, he have time. You know what he is doing for a living. You know he is just masturbating, as the, as Muhammad used to do. And even his friend, they come to the house, sleep in the house, and they masturbate. And then the wife Aisha in the morning, she said to them, "Oh, hold on. If you want, I can teach you how to take it off because this is what I do to the Prophet. I scratch it with my fingers." So Imam Malik have time. He just finished masturbation. Uh, free time. So he said, "Okay, then what?" So the man says, if I beat you in my argument and debate, uh -huh. you follow me. Mm. And if I don't beat you and you beat me, I follow you. Okay, okay. So Imam Malik says, okay. Okay, okay. So he accepts the terms and the condition. 
In two seconds, he will refuse the term and the conditions. I mean, do you see the stupidity of those who claim to be to, to know Islam? He just said, okay. Well, he just told you, if I win the argument, you leave your religion, you follow me. And you said to him, okay, what he said next, listen and laugh. And laugh. Let's assume I followed you and you beated me. Hmm. Then we both met someone who debated with us and he beated us. Okay. So the man says, that must be a Christian prince. We have to admit, okay. We follow him. He said, my son, the religion of Allah is one. And I see that you keep on hopping from one religion to the other. Uh oh, the one who keep hopping from one religion to other is a stupid. What is it? This is the case of Muhammad. How many religion Muhammad he changed? 40 years of his life, according to Muslims, he was not a Muslim. Now I know this guy will say, no, he was a Muslim. He was following Abraham. Well, you idiot, the Quran say clearly that your prophet, he was not following anything. He do not know what faith and he do not know what scriptures. You notice that those who claim to have, uh, let us say, they can answer us or can refute us. They don't really use their Quran to prove any point. Because simply they do not know what they are talking about. So when Muhammad, he in the Quran, his God, he says to him, you know nothing about faith. Let us open the verse. And you know nothing about books, about scriptures. Was Allah lying or he was reporting that Muhammad, he is a person who was jumping from a religion to a religion? When I say to a person, you know nothing about faith, which means whatever faith you used to have all your life, it was a fraud. You see, he did not say to him, you know some about faith. He didn't say to him, you have little idea about me. He said, you know nothing. And here you see the Muslim in translation, they try to fix it, but they make it more blind. And thus we have sent to you, between two brackets, Muhammad. By the way, the verse even doesn't say Muhammad. Ruhana, between two brackets, inspiration. This is false. Ruhana in Arabic means our spirit. Of our command, which means with our command. And you know not what is the book, nor what is faith. So what happened what happened, Muhammad? He changed in his faith now? He's hopping from a faith to a faith? How? He saw a guy in the cave, he squeezed him three times and he told him to read. And then he became a believer? No, he did not. He go, he went to his wife. He told his wife, I saw somebody in the cave. He squeezed me. Cover me. Cover me. Cover me. And then the wife, she said, hold on, hold on. What's happening to you? You are almost going to leak and pee in your pant. Let me take you to my cousin, Warqad bin Nufal, who is a Christian priest. The prophet, he'd been taken to Warqad bin Nufal. The wife, she told Muhammad as if he's a kid, tell him, tell him your story. Tell him, go ahead. Muhammad told him, there's a guy, he came to me, he squeezed me three times, and he told me, read. And then what he says, oh, this is the Namas. He is the angel of Allah. So the guy who was being squeezed, he did not know what's happening. And the guy who did not get squeezed, he knew what's happening. This is how your religion started, supposedly. Not to forget to mention that your prophet, he has something called that examination of inspiration. If you don't believe me, I can show you where supposedly Khadija, she did, did examine if the one Muhammad he see is an angel or not. And how she did that? She did the striptease. And as long as I don't like to say, say something without showing a reference, let us find it. <clears throat> I know that you do not know Arabic, which is very, make it more even stupid that you pray to your God in a language you do not know. 
This is a serial number here. Page number 239, value number one. What it says here? Imtihanu Khadija Burhan al Khadija examining the proof of Muhammad receiving inspiration from Allah. How? Muhammad, he sees someone sitting in the corner. And as usual, Muhammad, nobody see what he see. Because Muhammad, he have an extra vision. I mean, the angel in the corner, but Khadija next to him in the bed, she cannot see the angel, but Muhammad can see him. Look like the angel, he have an equipment who he can blind a person and the other person still can see. In other way, he was invisible for a person, but he is an invisible or yeah, he you know can be seen by the other person. If we translate what is in front of us, we will see that Khadija she said to the guy or Muhammad, aka Allah, oh when you see your friend, which means the angel, come to you, let let me know, let me know, Khabibi, let me know. So Khadija, uh, Muhammad he said, Khadija, I see him, I see him. So she said, okay, if he come to you, tell me. Tell me about it, which means Jibreel. Okay, so he came. This Jibreel, he came. But Muhammad is not sure now he is Jibreel or not, remember. So Khadija, she said to Muhammad, Okay, Khabibi Muhammad, get up, my cousin, and sit in my left thigh. What? Sit where? And what is the name of the chapter? The proof of revelation. What is the proof of revelation in Islam? Is the left thigh of Khadija and the right thigh of Khadija and the ass of Khadija. And I'm not going to mention the third one. So the guy, Muhammad, he go and stand up and he sit on her lap. And she said to him, okay, do you see him? Huh? He said, yes, I still can see him. She said, okay, turn around and sit in the right thigh. Like, is that going to make a difference now? I mean, look at this story, how serious it is. Because there's a difference between sitting, maybe in the right, in the, maybe if he sit in the right thigh, Muhammad will not see him no more. Because location, location, location. I mean, everything is about location in Islam. But what this religion is about? This guy is going to debate us about her prophet? This is your prophet or this is... A... What is this? And then she said, Okay, uh, turn, turn, uh, sit in the right thigh. She said, do you see him? He said, yes, I see him. She said, okay, okay. Now turn and sit in my lap because this is the position of sex. She said to him, do you see him? <laughs> he said, yes. <laughs> and then she started taking off her clothes and she said, do you see him? He said, no. She said, Re rejoice my cousin, for by sure for Allah, by Allah, he is an angel, not the devil. Look at this. So you potato, you are coming to debate us about a prophet who he himself could not even know if what he see as an angel or not and his wife she have to do strap tease moving him like a potato, like a puppy in the top of her lap from the right leg to the left leg like a monkey and she keep asking him, do you see him? Yes, I see him. Okay, sit in my lap, do you see him? Yes, I see him. And then when she take off her clothes, she said, do you see him? She take down her veil. This is the translation of Google. Do you see him? Well, the Muslim they say that this is a proof that this person who Muhammad he see in the corner is an angel. Why? Because well, she is getting naked, and an angel don't like to see naked women. Well, I say this is my opinion, by the way. I think that the angel he don't want his eye to be hurt. Because obviously she was very ugly. So he ran away. The angel was watching. He was saying, don't, 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 don't take off your clothes. Don't, no, don't do it. And here we 
coming to ask the Muslims who they claim to be smart, where Khadija she learned this trick? Like she used to encounter angels every day and she stripped to the previous husbands too. Maybe Khadija she was a striptease lady and she have a lot of expertise with angels. And as long as Khadija she knew that the angel he will not be staying in the room if she take off her clothes. So what the point of sit in my right leg and left leg? Just strip and finish it. Take off your panty. See him to him. Say, Muhammad, do you see him? He will say no. Tell him this is an angel. When I say stupidity is amazing, I mean it. Guys, shall I continue in, in getting this guy busted or we are done? I mean, this is too much, isn't it? Shall we continue? Let me know if you like me to continue or done. Right? Because he is not really worth it. He's just a kid. You know? Actually, what makes me upset from David Wood, where, where he got those kids? You know, he collected a bunch of kids from the street. Like, Mimi Hijab is a kid boy. Nobody even listened to him. He was a street corner shouter. Even Muslim don't listen to him. He made him famous. Why you do that? If you want to debate, at least debate somebody who have knowledge in his religion. Don't debate kids. It, it lower. You see, I open my sky for everybody to call me. I, can't, I don't consider this as a debate. Yesterday, a kid, he is 14 years old, called me. Can I call it a debate? Ultimate 40 called me. Even Ultimate 40 called me. Can I call it a debate? Go. Uh, Brother, tell us more, brother. I'm going to focus on three main examples of this inconsistency. Hmm. The first is what we can call the Old Testament question. Imagine there was a hadith that described Muslim soldiers coming back from battle Imagine. and reporting to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hmm. The soldiers report that they were victorious in battle and had killed all the enemy men. Hmm. Then the Prophet وسلم, asked sternly, what about the women and children? Were they also killed? Imagine. The soldiers say, no, we didn't kill them. Then imagine that the Prophet وسلم, <laughs> Then imagine, your Prophet did that, you idiot. <laughs> gets enraged at this and condemns the soldiers for not exterminating all the women and children. Hmm. Now imagine that if a hadith like this existed, imagine. David Wood would have no hesitation in citing it over and over again on his channel, making a big deal about it, denouncing Islam for it, and generally characterizing Muhammad وسلم, as an evil, bloodthirsty man. Hmm. But the reality is there is no such hadith. In yeah, there is no such a hadith. Christian Prince was showing you a hadith does not exist. And this hadith was in Bukhari and Muslim. But it's not exist. In reality, there is no such a hadith. Hmm. Imagine. Okay, we finished the, the part of imagination now. Continue. Let us see here. <clears throat> Continue your movie. Instead, this is what we read in the Bible about Moses. In Numbers 31, verse 14 to 18 of the Bible, we read, And Moses was angry with the officers of the army. Moses said to them, Have you let all the women live? Now kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman who has known man by lying with him. But all the young girls who have not known man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. Shall we go to the story of Bani al-Mustaliq and what your prophet he did with them? Shall we go to the story of Safiya and we see what he did with them? And why you don't tell us what is the story about Moses? If you idiot, you idiot. If you go to the Quran, you will see that the story is in the Quran. And Allah, he punished the Jews for not killing everyone there. Not only they did not kill, According to your Quran, they did not even attack. So your God, he enforced a penalty because the Jews refused to kill those who live in a, in a country called supposedly, according to the Quran, uh, the translation for sure, the Quran never mentioned the word Palestine. So Allah, he said to Moses, tell your people, all my people enter the Holy Land which Allah has assigned to you and turn not your back 
in what in fight okay what we will do there we will kill everybody they said Moses this is a holy land uh, okay oh well, Moses in, in this holy land there's people of a great strength you shall never enter it so the Jews refused to kill which story is true the one in the Bible or the one in the Quran then there's only two Muslims Muslim Jews here they accepted to follow Moses to do the attack so they can kill the women and the children and the Quran described those two who they say to uh, Moses let us assault them at the gate and for the rest of the Jews Allah he made them lose the land or direction for 40 years for refusing to kill every single man and every single woman and every single child you are a certified idiot now I think I'm going to stay uh, if this guy he said two words I will make a comment I better maybe move it a little bit from Jesus Christ, right? Don't give me the usual Christian apologetics about the New Testament superseding the Old Testament and the New Covenant making the Mosaic Law obsolete. Here you notice he is saying that don't tell me that the Christian don't follow the, old, the, the New Testament. Take a note. In the minute 20 and the 22nd, he just admitted that a Christian should not say don't tell me that you Christian do not follow the Old Testament. Did he say that? Because later he will say, no, you are not. You don't have Allah. And from Jesus Christ, right? According to Christianity, right? So when God in the Old Testament in 1 Samuel 15 commands Saul to kill women, children, and even infants, that's... Again, a certified donkey, because the story of Samuel is in your Quran, you idiot. I mean, how we can find a Muslim who know what he is talking about? If you go to the chapter 2, verse number 246, you idiot. It says that Allah, he sent to them, to Samuel, he sent angels to kill everybody. Have you ever heard of such an ignorance if this person he knew he will not say what he is saying and I wonder how long it's going to take me to finish this video because whatever he's saying I have to say something about it this is a chapter 2 chapter 2 verse number 246 why the Jews are fighting and killing people for the sake of Allah. This is your Quran. And your Quran confirm, you idiot, that they are saying why we should not fight those who they drive in us from our homes. So you strip it in the story of Samuel, according to your Quran, they were fighting the enemy who drove them from our their homes and they took their wives as sex slaves and their children's so when this coward he caught a story about Samuel do he knew what his Quran say about it for sure he don't because he is a certified donkey and I apologize for insulting donkeys if any of them present with us today because they will get upset, they have feeling too. Shall we go and find you? <laughs> the interpretation? <laughs> Imagine this guy was debating me. I mean, this is why they don't get close to me. Hey kid, do you have the courage to have a speech with me for like 10 minutes? Do you? So why Samuel, he took his army, he, he attacked the enemies because they killed 
his people. They took their homes, they took their women, they took their children. And exactly this is what your prophet did. And here you notice, do you remember yesterday when a Muslim, he called me, he says, Jesus was not a savior. I'm going to show you, prove it to you. And then when I showed him, the answer from his Quran and from his Hadith, he said, you run away to the Quran and the Hadith, which means he admit. that his argument does not stand for a second if we mention what the Quran say. And those people here, this guy is an example of stupidity. If we go right now to the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia or any Islamic website, are we going to find the story of Samuel or not? And if this is about Samuel or not, you will see the verse confirming that the Jews and Moses, the one who was he accusing, why you are killing, he was defending his people, who the enemy, they killed their children and they raped their women. So are you saying your prophet was a liar and your God is a fraud? Obviously, you are saying that. Let us go and see the interpretation for the verse. So the Muhammadan, they will not say this guy is making things up. Now, which interpretation I should show you? Al-Tha'labi, Al-Qurtubi, Al-Baghawi, because all of them, they say the same. You are a certified donkey, my friend. Let us open some interpretation. Tafsir al Bagawi Tafsir al Bagawi Page number two nine six Volume number one And here it says that the real name of this person we are talking about, his name is Shemuel. Muslims always, they have their own funny way to say words. Shemuel, so Samuel became Shemuel. All right? So, uh, you go read here, let us see what they did. Here it says that those people, they attack the Jews and they captive a lot of their children and their women and even from the children of their kings. And they took from them 440 little boy. Now the rest of the story is really, I mean, uh, funny. But the story here is saying that the Jews, they ask Allah to send angels to fight with them so they can slaughter those people. And the one who do that is a person, his name is Samuel. Different interpretation. Let us see Al-Qurtubi maybe. Let's open Al-Qurtubi, give me a second. So people will laugh at the stupidity of this religion. Garbage in, garbage out.
Let us see. Let us uh, use this translation here. We will use this one. You know, always I will give you the link so uh, uh, you can use Google translation from your side. Let me post it for you. You will see even in the Islamic translation, they are saying that those who Samuel was fighting, they killed every single woman. They killed what? Every single woman of the Jews except one. The coward he is attacking what his God teaching and preaching and defending Samuel, saying Samuel was doing the right thing because isn't it the Jews believe eye for an eye? Hmm? Let us use Prophet Google translation and let everybody laugh at you, idiot. Let us do that. All right, we open it in Google browser so we can translate. Here it says, that those people are people from the children of Jalut and they are from the they are living between the Sea of Rome which is the Mediterranean and Egypt and Palestine and they are giant and they were victorious on Bani Israel the children of Israel and they uh, took most of their land and they captured mo many of their children and they capture many of the ch children of their kings and 440 of them. And then here it says, After and they force on them jizya, which means the same as Muhammad he forced on the Christians. He forced pay or die those who are still alive, and they took their Torah, and they the children of Israel they faced from them a very horrible time, bala on washidda, and they did not have a prophet at that time to lead them, and those who they are from the children of the prophet, they were destroyed, and they did not have anyone left except a woman, she is carrying a baby. And they ask Allah to send a child. So now the Jews, they have only one woman. I mean, look at this story. There's only one woman left. And she is the one who is going to save the nation. And this woman, she gave a birth to a child. His name is Shemuel or Ishmael, which means Samuel. And the woman, she said, Allah, he heard my dua, my prayer. And she taught him the Torah and he grew. And one of the elders, he take care of him to teach him. Then Samuel, he came to him, an angel, his name is Jibreel, when he, while he was sleeping, next to this old man. And then the angel, he asked him to stand up. And he told him, tell your people that I am going to, Allah, he decided to send you as a messenger and as a prophet to your people. When Samuel, he came to his people, they accused him to be a liar. And they said to him, oh, you are seeking to be a prophet. You are rushing for it, but did not come to you. And they said to him, in kunta sadiqan fabaat lana malakan, or Malakan, if you are truthful, well, send us angels, ask your God, Allah, angels, so he can fight for us for the sake of Allah as a proof of your prophethood. 
And then this is what happened. Allah, he sent angels and they slaughter all the enemy. So this idiot, he was making fun. Let us now click at translate. And I gave you the link already, right? I gave you the link. Actually, this link I gave you is very long. Let me hold on. Let me let me make it short. Uh, let me give you a different website. Just give me a second. Because this link is very long. I mean, there's many, many interpretation in the same page. So I want to give you a page which is directly for this interpretation so you will not be confused. All right, this is the this is the interpretation, the same interpretation we are reading, but this is from the official kingdom website of Saudi Arabia. Let me know, please, if the website is opening fine. All right. Let me know if you can view the website because sometimes this website doesn't work as everything is Islamic. Is the interpretation appearing in your side or no? If not, I can give you a different page. Is it working? Why you don't get modern day debate? Well, I use old day debate. And my old day debate is better. Get lost. We don't do debate. People don't care about modern debate. Is that a fashion show, you idiot? Why you don't get modern day? What is that? Like, you know, make a plastic surgery for the boobs like Muhammad? Modern day debate. You don't dare even to, to talk to me. Well, you don't do modern day debate, Christian Prince. Here we go. I'm doing the modern. This is the most modern. We are using computer. We are using your website. We are using your stupid interpretation. We are using your scholars. We are using your prophet words. Is it modern or it's not modern? I dare you to say Muhammad is not modern. <laughs> but Muhammad is an old fashion expired. Muta boy. Christian Prince, why don't you use modern debate? Hmm? Christian Prince, be honest with me. What's the problem with you? Why you don't do you use all the modern day but debate? I'm really now, I don't know what to say to you. I'm really in trouble. I mean, I don't know what to say after what you just said. That's a lot. So let us go and do interpretation for what we showed you. Click, sorry, a translation, I mean. Translate to English. And now you will see all what we say to you there. How Samuel, he become a prophet and he, how he was the only left child which is born after the enemy killed everybody because only one woman she was still alive and how Allah he chose him to be a prophet and then his people say to him if you are a prophet truly let Allah send you angels to fight and to kill our enemies. Translation here says the word angel, always translated as a king. The fact this is a word angel, Malak, because it's confusing. Malak can be, you know, like from uh, Malik. So if you are a prophet, if you are claiming to be a prophet, will ask your God, to send angel or angels so we can attack the enemy and kick them away from our homeland. And we free our people from slavery. So this guy, he was attacking the story of Samuel, 
because he did not know this donkey that this is a story is exist in the Quran and his own version of explanation get him busted. So do you do you know now why I say that those I mean, like the Muslims they want to debate someone like David Wood? They don't want to debate me. Because I'm sure David Wood, he had no idea what I'm talking about. I'm not putting him down, but this is a reality. Because if he knew, he would say to him, well, hey, let us open the Quran. The story of someone is there. Are we following? When I criticize a Christian, I never put Christians down. But I criticize everybody, and you can criticize me when I say something wrong. When we say we are debating, that means the two people who are debating, they have a qualification. And obviously, the qualification is missing from both sides. Because one side, he have little limited knowledge about Islam, and the other side, who is the Muslim, he know nothing about Islam, to the point he challenged David Wood to show him a hadith that the Prophet was outrageous for not killing children. And this is the opening of his debate. Shall I continue? I mean, this video will take with me forever, because every second this guy, he says something, he may poo -poo. Seriously. I mean, we did not even play from his statement even one minute yet. It is a minute, and now we have 52 minutes respond, proving him to be stupid idiot from his book. So how we can finish a video of two hours? <laughs> Lord have mercy. Somebody saying you are debating yourself, speaking alone. Well, why you don't give me the Skype of this guy and I will call him right now? You see, you coward, I am the only one who opened my Skype and say who dare to call me, including those who claim to have knowledge, including those who say they can refute me. So how they refute me, they talk to themselves. They make a video refuting Christian Prince, right? So you see how stupid you are? As long as Christian Prince, you talk to yourself, why you don't call a Christian Prince right now and get him busted? Do you want to do that? Jimmy, do you have the courage to call any of your friends, all those who you think they are powerful, or to give me their Skype to call them right now? in front of everybody. And then there's no excuse that I'm debating myself. In fact, it is you who keep saying we debate only Christian Prince face to face. This is what you say, not me. I never said no to anyone. When the last time I said, I will debate you only face to face. What is face to face to about? Here we go. They are talking to David Wood in internet. What face to face is about? So who is the coward? And what is the answer for what I say? Like there's a guy, we show him, he's a prophet, he is farting from his nose. He's a prophet, is masturbating. He's a prophet, is cleaning his hand in the wall. He's a prophet, is cleaning his poo, -poo with his throw rocks. He's a prophet, taking shower with dead dogs and women blood from period. He's a prophet, is molesting a child. He's a prophet, is going after his son wife and flirting with her. And then he answer, I am not here to debate. I want to show the truth. And he posts something about, an article about the Bible. What is the answer for everything we say? Cowards. Muta boys. Muta boys. And he come in every video, he posts the same thing. I'm not here to debate. And he posts the article, which is funny, and he don't dare. I say to him, why you don't call me and let us see if you can, if you dare to speak about it. And now this Abdul, himself supposedly, he prepared himself for a debate. 
with David Wood. And all the argument he come, it is in his book against him. Actually, every Muslim should be laughing at him now. How this is going to be a religion? How you criticize the story of Samuel when the Quran says that it's Allah who sent the angels to slaughter every child and every woman of the enemies? How you criticize the story of Samuel when it says in your stupid book that those people they slaughter and they killed all the Jews and all the women until there's only one minute, one woman left and she is the mother of Samuel. What happened, my friend, that those dummies, they are dummies. And we are in the time where people, they praise dummies. And because they are dummies, they don't dare to speak to someone who knows and can get them busted in a second. Shall we go back to the story of in the video of this guy? Otherwise, it's going to take us 10 years to finish. <laughs> okay, boy, tell, tell us more, brother. It's really Jesus who commanded that. When God in the Old Testament in Numbers 31, 1 through 40, 24, commands the believers to take virgin girls as sex slaves, that's really Jesus who commanded that. Mm -hmm. When God in the Old Testament in Exodus 30, we just showed you this is Allah who command that. But remember, he just said this is Jesus. Remember that. The one who command, Musa, is Jesus. The one who command Samuel is Jesus. Take a note. And this is in the minute 1948. 34, 11 through 17, commands the believers to destroy the Canaanite altars and destroy their idols and symbols. That's really Jesus who commanded that. This is Jesus who commanded that. Remember, take a note. In a minute after, they will deny it is Jesus. When God in the Old Testament tells the believers to stone to death fornicating women, all those who violate the Sabbath, all those who blaspheme, all those who curse their parents, those are all in reality commands from Jesus Christ. Do you hear it? Did you hear it, Muslims? All of those are in reality the command of Jesus Christ, so he admitted that Jesus is God. But this guy, he will make a big poo, poo right after. He is going to challenge David and he will say to him, well, Jesus did not bring any law. <laughs> he made a speech that Jesus, he have zero law. You know what zero law mean? Zero. But in his introduction, he's saying that all those law is coming from Jesus. I mean, how stupid this idiot is. What your mother she feed you? Manure? Right? Right. Don't give me the usual Christian apologetics about the New Testament superseding the Old Testament and the New Covenant making the Mosaic Law. That is false because Jesus said, I did not come to, de to destroy, I came to complete. So we got you busted. Continue. Law obsolete. That is missing the point. The point is, according to Christianity, Jesus is the God of the Old Testament, which means Jesus commanded all that killing and stoning and slaughter, all the massacres, all the bloody cleansing of the earth that's described in the Old Testament. Those all the bloody things happen in this earth is the command of Jesus. Let us continue. Those are all coming from Jesus. And in fact, they're endorsed by Jesus for a 1300 year period from Moses' time until Jesus' time. So you can't present this modernized picture of Jesus only preaching peace, love, and nonviolence. Jesus, according to Christianity, is quite a vengeful and wrathful God, or at least he was in Old Testament times. How can a Christian who has to believe all this about Jesus Christ turn around and criticize Islam for violence, especially since, according to the Bible, Jesus even calls for killing women, children, and infants? There's nothing like that in the Quran. And 
You see, there's nothing like that in the Quran. We just showed you that this is in the Quran. Big mouth, potato, and everybody is laughing at your religion now. And not only that, the Quran refuted you that those people, they are fighting and killing the enemies as they kill them. As you mentioned the story of Samuel, that only one woman left from all the people of, of, of Israel. Only one woman left. This is according to your stupid book. And hadith. So isn't this the most outrageous double standard? Exactly. David Wood, please explain this. Explain how you can criticize Islam and smear the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as a violent, bloodthirsty warmonger when according to your own theology, your God, Jesus Christ, also commanded and approved of all these things and more. So David Wood, you're extremely dishonest when you criticize Islam. And in fact, Christians should really hate you for what you're doing because you're essentially training David, do we hate you? Because we found that Allah is the one who ordered the Jews to attack the Palestinian in the Quran in chapter 5, verse 21. And we found that it's Allah who ordered Samuel to take an army of angels to slaughter every one of the enemies. We should hate you because this is exists in the Quran in chapter 2, verse number 246. This is double standard, David Wood. We should hate you because Muhammad, he says, kill them, they are from them, those children and the women. We should hate you. You have double standard. And all those orders are from Jesus Christ. When this guy, he said, is that in the beginning that I missed something? I don't know. Because later he would say, I'm trying to skip it, because this will make the video in this, by the way. What he just said, that Jesus did not bring any law. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. Anyone knows what the, what made he said that? Warfare and so forth. As a Muslim, I gladly concede all of. Okay, hold on. Let me see when when he start talking about Jesus. He have no law. Pagan regime, and he would presumably not be interested in criticizing or rebelling against other regimes like an Islamic government or a communist government or a liberal government. Let us see. This is just a garbage talk now claiming that he was an advocate for these types of liberal ideals and that he would have disapproved of Islam. So this is the politics of Jesus question. And there's also the Old Testament question and the Christian. Hold on, maybe we skipped it. The problem with this option is that a modern liberal state of this type did not exist before the about sin should cast the first stone or do not resist an evil person and turn the other cheek. Okay, hold on pagan regime, and he would presumably not be interested in criticizing or rebelling against other regimes like an Islamic government or a communist government or a liberal government. He is not concerned with politics at all. On this view of Jesus, Jesus's teaching do not imply, imply a critique of Caesar's law and military politics, but, but this would also mean that Jesus wouldn't be critical of Prophet Muhammad, his laws and military policies. I mean, why would Jesus be fine with the pagan Roman emperor who was engaged in persecuting believers, but have a problem with Muhammad sorry hmm. you see here you see the stupidity and the lies Jesus he don't have a problem with the Roman how is that where when the Jews they come to Jesus and they said to him should we pay tax to Caesar Jesus he showed them that they are the one who is obeying the Caesar not him he asked them do you have coins with you do you have money they said yes. He said, show us. One of them, he grabbed one from his pocket and he showed him. And he said to them, what is this picture in this coin? They said, this is Caesar. So he said, give to Caesar what is to Caesar. He never always say to them, obey this Caesar or that Caesar. He showed them that they are hypocrite. In the same time, you coward, it was your prophet, and you are the one who's saying the Roman are pagan. It was your prophet who was supporting the Roman. There's a chapter in the Quran, it's called the chapter of the Roman, where your prophet, he promised that Allah will give victory to the Roman because they are believers and they will be victorious. So who is the one who was supporting the Roman? Did Jesus say to the Roman, you will be victorious? And when the Roman, they will be victorious, the believers will be rejoicing? Why you will be rejoicing for the Roman? 
who they were at that time disbelievers in Islam. And until now, and when the Roman, they will defeat their enemies, which is the Persian, the believers, the Muslims will rejoice that victory is given from Allah to the Roman against the Persian. Again, this guy, he do not know what he is talking about. Jesus never praised the Roman. The Roman. Jesus, he never adopted the law of the Roman. And you idiot, you just confirm that by saying that all the law of Moses is coming from Jesus. You are just a stupid mental idiot. But I'm trying to find where he said that Jesus, he have no law. Is that in the second response? Anyone can help me? Because I want to move there. Because you will see how stupid what he's saying. He, he totally contradict himself. When he start explaining that Jesus, he brought no law. He said that Jesus, he have a three. Uh, let me see. Maybe I missed something. Which minute is that? I did not take a note. I should have taken a note. So we don't play all the video all endless. Yeah, I did not I did not take a note when he said that. Which moment? Moment. If anyone knows what moment he said that, let me know. Uh, <clears throat> maybe this is in the second response. I'm not sure. But because so, so this option is out. The second possibility is that Jesus is concerned with politics and political change, but he's an anarchist who believes in abolishing law and armies because these things are violent and intolerant. This is why Jesus says things like, he who is without sin should cast the first stone or do not resist an evil person and turn the other cheek if someone assaults you. Or yeah, here, here we go. Listen carefully. So he is giving us three options. If an unjust person takes your coat, give him your cloak as well. The interpretation is that Jesus is not talking about an, eth an ethic of forgiveness in these Bible verses. He's actually talking about abolishing laws against assault and robbery. He's against policing people. He's against a military force that would stop a foreign army from assaulting and robbing the populace. You see here the liar, the scumbag. He just said all kind of lies. Where Jesus, he abolished the law. When they come to stone the women, did Jesus say to them, don't stone her? Anyone can show me a verse saying that Jesus said, don't stone her? Jesus said to them, if any of you don't have sin, cast your stone. So he's saying to them, you are a bunch of hypocrites going after this poor woman, but you are fornicator like her. Where Jesus said, don't stone. Since when? When Jesus himself, he said, I came to complete, not to destroy. So your argument is stupid. Where Jesus said, if somebody doing a robbery, let him go. Can you show me? Isn't it Jesus is the one who said to Peter, the one who lived by the sword will die by the sword, which means the punishment for killing is killing. So you are a fraud and you are making false statement against the teaching of Jesus. Where Jesus, he said, you can do fornicate. Where Jesus, he said, you can be a thief. Where Jesus, he abolished those punishments. Can you show us? When Jesus said, if somebody hit you in your right cheek, this is not a theft. He is teaching us not to use violence in return and use the law. There's a law, they live in a state. At that time, actually, there was a law that if you hit a certain cheek, and actually this was existing even in Europe, a noble fight. That if you use a certain hand, you go to jail. If you hit a certain cheek, you go to jail. So Jesus was saying, use the law and don't be a person who break it. And you are the one who said a second ago that Jesus is the one who brought the law in the Old Testament. So why you are lying? Where Jesus said, you can beat each other. 
Where Jesus said, if a man rape a woman, let him go. Where Jesus said, if a thief is a thief, let him go. Where are you getting this from? You're a coward, a liar. On this view, Jesus would see Muhammad as very evil for the specific reason that Muhammad is not an anarchist. Rather, where Prophet Muhammad was doing all the crime you mentioned as an example, when Muhammad he attacked the Roman and he said, let us attack the Romans so we can get the blonde girls. Is that awful? According to the teaching of Jesus? Is that lawful according to the teaching of Muhammad? Let us open the reference so they will not say, I'm making things up. Why Muhammad he attacked the Roman? Did the Roman attack Muhammad? Never. He said, attack the Roman so you can capture the blonde girls. Is that a prophet of God? This is the interpretation. You can open al Qurtub, you can open any interpretation you want. This is a Durul Manthur. A man he said to Muhammad, Stop tempt us with women. This is in your stupid Quran. But why he said that? Because Muhammad he said attack the woman so you can get the blondie girls what kind of a prophet he have such an ethic is that from god Is it from God that we will attack the neighbors so we can get their blondie daughters? I thought your prophet was doing jihad for the sake of Allah. It turned to be that his jihad was for the sake of a blondie women. He did not say to his followers, let us attack the Roman so we can convert them to Islam. He was saying attack the Roman so we can get the blondie and their women. That is the truth. Can you respond to that? Well, it doesn't say that, CP. It doesn't. Are you sure? Yes, CP. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Let us see. For some reason, this website here, the Saudi Arabia is not opening. Uh, let us see the different one. Here we go. Al-Tabari, value number 10, page number 191. What Muhammad, he said to the Muslims, attack Tabuk and you will get the blondie girls and their women. A person, his name El Jad, he said to him, "Don't, please, don't tempt us with women." Which means this man is saying to Muhammad, "You are a scumbag, trying to make us go to for war with other land, just for the sake of getting some blondie girls." Is that from the mighty God? Attack the woman so we can get the blonde girls. And here, if you use Google Translation, you might find it says the word yellow. The Muhammad he used the word yellow for the blonde. <coughs> what kind of a prophet he makes such an order? Attack the woman and get the blonde girls. Attack the book so you can gain 
the yellow girls and the women of the Roman. You are a potato, my friend. Continue. We like potatoes anyway. Brother Muhammad is someone who passed laws and had a military policy which entailed violence. But of course, such a view of Jesus is absurd, and no pre-modern Christian ever believed he was an anarchist, so this option is out. The third possibility is that Jesus is concerned with politics, but he is not a proponent of anarchy. Rather, he wishes to establish a modern liberal state. According to this vision of Jesus, Jesus wanted a state that upheld something like modern human rights norms and had a foreign policy that consisted of strictly defensive wars. On this view, Jesus would condemn Islam because Islam is not compatible with such a modern liberal state. Well, Jesus, he condemned Islam right away. Jesus, he said many things about religion like Islam. He said, don't pray like those hypocrites who pray in the corners. Don't fast like those who shout and scream and say, we are fasting. When you fast, wash your face and don't tell people that you are fasting. Jesus condemned child molester like your prophet. He says, it is better for a person who let, harmed the little one to put a milestone in his neck before he harmed the little one and throw himself in the deep ocean. My Jesus, he said, it's better to take your eye out of your head, better than your eye leading you into hell. And this is talking about fornication. Your prophet was a fornicator. And your prophet was a child molester. And your prophet used to look at women and he keep looking until he get tempted. And yet he claimed to be a prophet of God. Who said that Muhammad is not mentioned by Jesus? Jesus said, be aware of false teachers and all the teaching of your prophet is false. Since when we can find that Jesus said to a woman, give your breast so a man can suckle her. This is the law of who? The law of God? Did Jesus approve a murder? Is it the Quran says that Allah He told the Jews that don't kill a soul, commit no crime? And this was an order to the Jews, which means this is not the Old Testament. So when you say, well, the third Jesus, then he should be condemning Muhammad, he condemned Muhammad all the way. Jesus, he said, it not what go in your mouth make you dirty. Muhammad, all of him is, he is so dirty from inside and outside. Have you ever heard of a prophet of God? He said that the one who is proud about his inheritance before Islam, tell him to go and bite the penis of his father. Is that a word coming from God? Did Jesus allow the Christian to do muta and have three nights stand for sex? Is that your God teaching? This is in the Quran, chapter 4, verse 24. So when this coward, he say that Jesus could not, did not condemn Muhammad if he is, as we claim, according to him, well, all the verses in the Bible condemning Muhammad. In the top of that, even the Bible says that the one who is the liar, who is the Antichrist, to make it more clear, is the one who denied that Jesus is the Christ and the Father and the Son, and he is the Son of the Father. So he was condemning your prophet. Continue, Abdul. The problem with this option is that a modern liberal state of this type did not exist before the Enlightenment in the 18th and 19th centuries. Furthermore, modern liberal secularism was primarily created by atheists. Here is just stupid, he forgot to, to, to tell you that Jesus, he did not have a state to make a state law. I mean, how stupid, how naive, how dumb you are. Was Jesus a king of a state and he had ministers? Do he have an army and soldiers? Did he establish a government? What are you talking about? How silly you are just a teenage kid. That can be a question if Jesus was ruling the country and he put a law into test. 
then we can question the law he made into test. Look like this potato, he is even denying the Quran, that even the Quran says that Jesus, he needed support, and this is where the word Nasara is coming from. He said, who is going to help me? The disciple, they say, is us. He have only 12 disciples, he don't have a 12 army. You don't have a 12 ministers. So what this guy is talking about? This is where the word Nasara is coming from supposedly, according to your stupid prophet. Then Isa, he said, he came. He know the disbelief. He said, who will be my helper? Well, we have a 12 disciple, he don't have a state, he don't have a country to rule, he don't have an army, he don't have a minister. So he's talking about Jesus' state. <laughs> if Jesus have a state, you donkey, then why your God Allah, he run with Jesus to save him from the cross? If Jesus have a country and a state and an army, so how they will crucify him? If Jesus is the one have a control of the law, as a king, as you are claiming, well then who is the one who want to put him in the cross? His army? You are an official stupid who made a paper before you go to the debate and now we are laughing at you. And I wonder when I'm going to finish this video. Continue. Deists and critics of Christianity. Furthermore, earlier states established by Christians like the Byzantine Empire, the Spanish Empire, etc. None of these were modern liberal states or anything close in terms of respecting human rights and so forth. How do, so how could Jesus have called for a state that never existed? This is a historical... He just said never existed. So all the options you gave us, it was a fraud. Secondly, who said to you that the Roman state was Jesus' state? Who said that? Who said that the Spanish state was Jesus' state? Was their constitution the Bible? What this guy is talking about? error so this option is out furthermore christians should consider what is involved in a modern liberal state it involves among other things protecting the free speech of people who blaspheme god facilitating sex outside of marriage which just i like that you know if you want to support the freedom then you have to support sex out of marriage will your prophet support sex out of marriage actually most of your prophet relationship was sex without marriage was married the cooked his wife Was the wife of his son his wife? When you were a prophet, he went to the house of his own son and he flirted with the wife and he said to her that my Allah, he made my heart a flip for you. Where is the, where is the person who have a dignity and he protect relationship of marriage. Isn't it your religion says that if you have a daughter, she is not a family marriage, you can have sex with her? Let us show the reference. You Muslims are the one who protect the family and relationship of family and marriage and the value of marriage. Muta'i people, This is Tafsir al Qurtubi. What you will say to me, it doesn't say that. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi, value number 13, page number 59. The Quran, wa 
What does that mean? Read carefully and laugh. Any relationship is coming from illegal relationship is not to be considered. Therefore, it doesn't go under the Quran where it says, حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ أُمَّهَاتُكُمْ وَبَنَاتُكُمْ Therefore, it's forbidden for you to have sex with your mother and your daughter. So to make it simple, the Quran have a verse saying, you cannot have sex with your mother and your daughter. But in the same time, the page here is saying that if the daughter, she is a daughter from adultery, she is not your daughter, so you can have sex with her and F her. This is why according to Islamic law, and this guy will talk about justice and law. Is that a justice that a child, he is born of fornication? He cannot have a child support? What kind of justice is that? Is that justice that a child, he is born of a fornication? We can F the child, and yet he is my child. Isn't it true that a child of fornication, he cannot even take his father's name? What kind of religion? It says that it's okay to have sex with your own little girl, daughter, if she is a daughter from fornication. When your scholar says that Allah, he made relationship by lineage, which means by marriage, by Sharia Allah. And according to the most accurate opinion in Islam, that Allah, he made for sure a human being by mixing the water between male and female, according to the Sharia Allah, which means muta or sex contract as Muslim they call it marriage but if it was from sin then this is coming from something forbidden or forbid for Muslim to do supposedly therefore it's not what is not what is coming from something is forbidden is not forbidden for you to do with it which means the daughter she is not your daughter so because of that your daughter from and the mother of your daughter, which means the woman you are fornicating with, and the daughter which you have fornication with her, from that fornication, this daughter is not forbidden for you to have adultery with her, because she is not considered as your child. And this is according to the most accurate view of the religion of Islam. So when this edict he says, Jesus will condemn, will Jesus condemn Muhammad teaching? And here, by the way, I want to ask you, as long as you mentioned that, how come your God Allah and your prophet never mentioned that Jesus he did not bring any law? Can you show me where in the Quran it says so? Destroys traditional family and gender roles. Where is that? Where is it that Jesus claims that the state should protect so-called human rights of this type? There is no proof of this. By extension, there is no proof that Jesus would have condemned the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, or Islam for not sufficiently protecting people's rights to blaspheme and have fornication and who attack family. Here you notice the stupidity of this person. Well, didn't the people they call Jesus names? Did he kill them? Jesus in the cross when the Jews, they will blaspheme him, making fun of him, crucifying him. What his response was? Father, forgive them, they do not know what they are doing. They are doing it to him, not, not cursing God in heaven, they are cursing God who is in the front of them. Jesus said, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they are doing. So again, you are an idiot. Continue. Life. David Wood is abusing the historical Jesus by claiming that he was an advocate for these types of liberal ideals and that he would have 
disapproved of Islam. So this is the politics of Jesus question. And there's also the Old Testament question and the Christian governance question. If David cannot answer these three issues in the debate, he really has no leg to stand on in criticizing Islam for violence and intolerance. Well, we answer all those questions. And actually, I heard David, he is saying something very important, but I don't know which minute he said that. Let me see. Did I take a note? I'm not sure. Um, let us see. Okay, in the minute I have a note for this one, let us go, 45. Listen to what David, he said, which is very good. Pillar of cloud giving us orders right now, and you say, I don't have to listen to you. Or if you're, 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 you're not one of the people who were actually following him, you're someone else and you're saying, I don't care what that pillar of fire says. I don't care about these people who are just led through the, the sea. I say God has the right to give life or to take life. This is very different from Muhammad coming along. Someone who comes along and the guy thinks he's de his first impression of his revelations was that they were demonic. He has to be talked out of that by his wife and her cousin. Uh, he tried repeatedly to commit suicide. Whenever something was going wrong, he would try to kill, he would try to hurl himself off a mountain. Um, he admittedly was... A stop, stop, stop. Because this guy, he did not like what you said, David. I'm going to put him in the screen about what you just said. He was moving his head in a certain way. I'm not sure why. Watch carefully. Pillar of cloud giving us orders right now. And you say, I don't have to listen to you. Or if you're, 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 you're not one of the people who were actually following him, you're someone else and you're saying, I don't care what that pillar of fire says. I don't care about these people who are just led through the, the sea. I say God has the right to give life or to take life. This is very different from Muhammad coming along. Someone who comes along and the guy thinks he's de his first impression of his revelations was that they were demonic. He has to be talked out of that by his wife and her cousin. Uh, he tried repeatedly to commit suicide. Whenever something was going wrong, he would try to kill, he would try to hurl himself off a mountain. Did you see how he moved his head? No, this is not true. Muhammad, he tried to kill himself. No, 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 no. You are so cute. Look at his face. He's moving his dead like a lizard. Let's go to the hadith. Betito. No, 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 no. This is your stupid prophet trying to commit suicide many times. Not only once, not only two. The hadith says many times. And here the reference. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. You cannot tell me this is weak. 6982. So don't shake your head like a lizard. It says here that we heard that he intended several times to throw himself from the top of the high mountain. And every time he went up to the mountain in order to throw himself down, Jibreel would appear before him and say, O oh, Habibi Muhammad, indeed you are a messenger of Allah. So obviously your prophet himself, he don't believe he's a prophet. Because when he hear that, he come down, he go home. Which means the reason for him to go and try to commit suicide that he himself is the last one to believe he is a prophet. And look how stupid Muhammad is. He needed the angels to keep coming to him. It's like a spoiled boy. You tell him, he go in the floor, he starts shaking his head and crying, I want candy, I want candy, you know, I want to go, I want to go. And then his mom, she come and she give him a candy and he stopped crying. This is your prophet. Each time he want to commit suicide, each time, how many times? The angel appeared for him, and the funny is that the angel, he wait until Muhammad climbed the mountain. Look like the angel, he liked to see Muhammad hiking. I mean, why the angel don't appear to him when the guy is leaving the house? Why he wait until the guy in the top of the mountain, and now he is negotiating with him? Secondly, isn't it your prophet, he says that the one who killed himself, he will end in hell. 
So why he's trying to kill himself? Isn't it obvious that your prophet is a monkey? His brain is a brain of a coconut? He think he's a coconut. He climbed the tree, he wanna jump. A Jibril, he come to him, hey coconut, don't jump. Truly, truly, you are not a coconut. Hey, go, David. Tell us more about the coconut. Um, he admittedly was a victim of black magic that gave him delusional thoughts and false belief. He admitted that Satan tricked him into delivering revelations, promoting polytheism. I mean, where do you see that in the prophet? Someone delivers a revelation, promotes polytheism, comes back later and says, the devil made me do it. So this is, it's not just, hey, there's not enough good evidence here. Or there's not enough miracles. It's this guy is the least reliable person in history. If I were this is the best statement. He is the least trustworthy person in history. He's mentally ill. He's a child molester. He's a thief. He's a fornicator. He go to his son wife and he flirt with her in the house of her husband. They are not divorced. She is under the roof of a husband. He flirt with her and this is in your book. So when an idiot, he come and say, we have a law. Okay, shouldn't we ask who is the one who provides the law for you? We find that the law is coming from a guy who want to kill himself many times. From a guy, he been squeezed by an angel and his wife, she discovered this is an angel or not by doing striptease. By a guy, he legalized for him that a Muslim, he can have four wives, but he can have unlimited wives. This is a law. It's a law of God that God, he made a special law for Muhammad and there's a special law for the Muslims. It's a law that you cannot marry a woman, her husband is dead if she is the wife of Muhammad. Special law. Isn't it obvious that this person is mentally ill, creating law to fit with his jealousy? He don't want any man to sleep with his wives. How come he step with women who they are widowed, but his widowed cannot sleep with women, with men who they are alive? He's dead now. Aisha, she can't get married. Khadija, she have two husbands before Muhammad. Muhammad had no problem to sleep with her because she is rich. So how come when his wives became widows, they cannot marry after Muhammad? Is that a law of God? You ask Muslims, why a Muslim woman is better for her to marry if her husband died? They would say, this is will prevent the fitna, which means temptation. Okay, good. What about the wives of Muhammad? <laughs> They don't have temptation. Their vagina is closed by rocks, protected by Allah. What is the problem of the wife of Muhammad after his death? She marries someone else. So Muhammad obviously is the last trustworthy. Is it a trustworthy to have a person, he go to your house and you are his son, and when you are not there, he flirt with the wife? Let us go coconut to line up every person who's ever existed and say who is the least who's the last person i would follow uh telling me about god uh it would be muhammad again not just because he's not performing miracles not just because he doesn't have any evidence it's because he has this amazing collection of features that make him the least reliable person in history uh and it's not just you know, the things i've mentioned already it's, it's it's other things like him just constantly getting revelations that have no purpose other than justifying uh then allah giving him what he whatever desires he has happens to have for that day and so massive difference massive difference between god visibly appearing giving orders and you saying not following you and someone saying i'm not following muhammad because he's the most okay we'll stop with david otherwise we will stand forever here let us go to this guy. I just took little notes in the video. I just, I moved the video. I don't listen to all of, all of it. So this guy here, let us go in minute number 37 in my note. 
37. Let us see what he will say. Were uh, order to be killed and slaughtered and destroyed. And the other point that you made is that I'm trying to attack the Old Testament for its violence. That's not my point. Like you completely misunderstood my point, David. My point is that how are you criticizing Muhammad وسلم, and the Quran? How are you criticizing us for abiding by this religion when these things are found in the Old Testament? Can you find me where in the Old Testament it says you can go and take the wife of your son? Can you find me in the Old Testament where it says you can fornicate? This is all in your religion. Can you show me in the Old Testament where it says you can rent a woman for three days, three nights? Can you show me in the Old Testament where it says that uh, in the case of murder, I will go for that later, just wait for this one. Just wait. And you don't consider Moses to be an evil person. You're the one who is inconsistent. I don't have a problem with the slavery that will have been practiced according to Mosaic law. I don't have a pro problem with many of these instances of violence and intolerance. The people who have a problem with it are atheists and liberals, the kinds of people that you are sometimes you know, fraternizing with on your YouTube channel. They are the ones who will criticize the Old Testament for those kinds of acts of violence and intolerance. I'm not saying that everything that's in the Old Testament uh, is exactly true, because as Muslims, we believe in, in tahrif, basically, that the older revelations have been modified and distorted and corrupted. And by the way, this is the view that is corroborated by Western scholarship. <laughs> Western scholarship, he was just attacking the atheist, and now he take the atheist against what he say. Look how the stupidity. He says, I believe as a Muslim that I don't believe in the Old Testament because it's corrupted. So you idiot, if it is corrupted, so how you're a prophet, he say, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. Remember carefully, he mentioned the Old Testament by name. As long the Old Testament, according to you Muslims, is corrupted. Then how Muhammad in his time, in his lifetime, he come to the Jews and he said to them, bring me the Torah. And he would draw the cushion from underneath of him. And he placed the Torah on it. Look how much respect he's showing. And he's saying, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. But you just said, I don't believe in thee and the one who sent thee. So you just confirm that Muhammad, as David would say, he is not a reliable person. He's a stupid. Because if the book of the Jews is not true book, it's corrupted, as you said, then how you prophet he swear by it and say, I believe in thee. One of you is a stupid. One of you is a liar. Either Muhammad, he knew it's corrupted and he's swearing by it. That's what make him absolutely satanic, proving that he is a false prophet. Or Muhammad, he don't believe it's corrupted and he is swearing by it and that will make you a corrupt liar. So which one? Here you notice the idiot, he said, that the Jews, they corrupt the, uh, the Torah, right? If you go and read the Quran, you will not see where it says they corrupt the, 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 the Torah. It says, They change the location of words. And the story is the same hadith. The, a Jewish guy, he put his finger over the word stone into death. He did not take the word. He placed his finger over it. And I have a surprise for you, you idiot. Your God Allah, he said to Muhammad, why they are asking you to be judged between them and they have the Torah.
but why do they come to thee for decision for judgment when there they have their own law before them in the front of them do you see it so he just confirmed that the book of the Quran is not a trustworthy because I don't believe that the Torah is correct, it's corrupted. And when your God, the stupid God, he is saying to Muhammad, how come the Jews are coming to you asking you to make a judgment when they have the book of judgment, it is the Torah, and it is between their hands. Do you see it? And by the way, it is in the same verse, in the same chapter where it says the Jews, they are uh, uh, which means they are playing with the book. The same, the same book, the same stupid book. Read it. Stupidity is amazing. I mean, I cannot find a Abdul. He have a little IQ to speak about. And actually, this this if we can call it a debate, this is a wonderful debate because you just got your prophet busted. What more we want? The Quran confirmed the book between our hands. And he confirmed the gospel and the Torah. But this Abdul, he won't agree with the Quran. Is that your book? <laughs> Is that your book? And as long you are making an argument that Jesus did not bring Allah, if this is what the Christian adopted in the New Testament, so why you stupid God, he confirmed what Jesus brought in the gospel. And read it carefully. It says, confirming what is with them. He did not even use the word gospel, by the way. He did not even use the word Torah, which means whatever is with them. All the books with them, Allah, he confirmed. And we just showed you that Muhammad, he take an oath of it. So do the Quran confirm or does not confirm? Do you see the stupidity? And when this guy, he say, and he speak that Quran and Islam brought Allah, can you tell me the law of rape in the Quran? For sure there's no law because Muhammad is a rapist. And as long the Quran is made by God and you have a law, what kind of God he changed his law every few days? Let us read together, because I want to finish this video, otherwise it's going to take forever. For whatever this guy he said, it's a, it's a horrible for his religion, not for us. He said nothing, except he got his prophet busted. He said that the Bible is corrupt, the Torah is corrupt, his prophet, he swear by it. He said it's, it's corrupt, and the Quran says confirm it. He says it is not to be followed when the Quran says, why they are asking you about judgment when they have the book between their hands? And then we find this. What a comedy. You have a book of law? You have Sharia law? Let us see. Chapter 2, verse number 106. Remember, he's talking that Muhammad, he brought a law. What is the law? Whatever verses between two bracket revelation, do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten? Question. Allah, he made a law, and now he will make you forget his law. Why? Do we have any Abdul in the crowd? He can tell us how in the world such a thing happened.
First of all, he just said that the Bible is corrupt, but based on this verse, the Quran is corrupt too. Because based on this verse, there is somebody, he make us to forget the law of God. Based on this verse, the one who calls us to forget is Allah. But this is mean that Allah is a stupid mental psycho. He make Allah and then he want us to forget the law he made. As an example, Allah, he made a law that women, she can give her breast to a stranger. The Muslim, they claim that a goat ate the Quran and she ate with it the stoning to death and the breast feeding for adult. Question. The goat she ate the verses of a breast feeding for adult. Did she eat your memory too? As long as you are saying we have a law and our law is a preserved, will the goat she ate the paper? Did she eat your head? Did she go to every Muslim house and she eat her memory? His memory? And what kind of you know, he said to us, if Jesus is, you know, then Jesus should condemn. Did Jesus say to a woman, if you see a man and he is not lawful for you, give him your breast and let him suckle it. Ten different times. Is that a certified honorable teaching? Or this is a perverted man making fun of his followers? And then Aisha, after that, she listened to her husband. So she asked her sisters to open their bra and to give their boobs to whoever come to see her. Which is very nice, to be honest with you. Too bad I wasn't at, exist at that time to practice, to practice my hobby of a breast tubing for adult. Is that a law of God? A woman, she give her boobs to a stranger. You will say, oh, this is only as a license for one. Your God, he made a license only for one woman and it is a breastfeeding for adult? 10 time? He, by the way, why 10 time? What about five time? What about two time? I mean, do you think like one time will not do it? Like what will happen if we do, you know, 10 time, 10 time? What about if it's nine and a half? So now anyone want to come to Aisha, he have to go to her sisters and he have to suckle their, her, 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 the sister of Aisha boobs 10 times. So when Abdul, he come to us and he say, we have a prophet, he have Allah, he has God, and how he can criticize us. We go, we see how Jesus, he stand against all this garbage. What is this? Breast feeding for adult. It's a revelation from God. Secondly, when the goat she ate, the stoning to death verses, why we cannot find it in the Quran? Is that something Muhammad he took from the Jews and we just showed you the verse where Muhammad or the Hadith, where Muhammad he took the Torah and he swear by it? Shall I say more guys or we have enough for today? I mean, we can continue forever. You know what I mean? We can continue forever with the stupidity of those people. This guy, he said in the video, I have in my note here in the minute 41, I think. Let's see. You see, I was just going over the video, like just I moved the mouse. I'm not going to listen to everything. And whatever he say in that moment, I save it. Uh, minute 41. 41. Let us go to 41.
Moses, and we believe in the Torah, we believe in the revelation of the past prophets. They've just been corrupted and distorted. But and we got your prophet busted because he swear by it and the Quran confirming it and say we believe in what is between our hands. So you are stupid again. Continue. I don't have a fundamental problem with the violence there. So I think you've misunderstood uh, my entire hmm. argument. You got it. We'll kick it over. Uh, also, oh, wait, wait, I have 30 seconds. Can I just say one? No, no, no. He just remembers something. He just remembers something. Listen carefully. One more thing. Sure. Sorry. Uh, so also, you cited a lot of Augustine. You cited a lot of different Christian authors. I don't think that's really relevant because uh, I can also cite many Christian authors who said very intolerant things. Who and, and Christian emperors, Theodosius, who was very intolerant. You see here, the stupidity is, I can recite. Christian who say intolerance things, we are talking about God teaching, we are talking about Jesus teaching, and you are talking, you can, okay, Christian Prince, he says something, what does this have to do with Christ? Look what he will say now. Tolerant with his policies, you have to go back to the original sources, because that's how you criticize Islam, you look at the Prophet, peace be upon him. So when you're justifying just war theory and so forth, uh, place it in Jesus' actual Time. teachings. Thank you very much. We place it in Jesus' actual teaching and we place it in Muhammad's actual teaching. So the actual teaching of Muhammad to go and attack the tribe of Safiya and then he killed the husband, the brother, she was a bride, and the father. And then he raped her before he leave the town. We go to the original sources and we find that Muhammad is a child molester. Who have a sexual desire after a child, she is six years old. We find that Muhammad, he encouraged his men to go after children to rape them. Claiming that they are more fun. As an example, there's a story of a person, his name is Jabir, and your prophet, he asked him, uh, why you are a rush, Jabir? Jabir, he said, oh, I am a newly married prophet. Muhammad, he said, did you marry a previously married woman or a child? The guy, he said, a previously married woman. Muhammad, he says to him, why? Why? Why you don't marry a young child? So she can play with you, and you can play with her. So you are right. When we want to criticize, we are not going to judge Islam by a Muslim. We are going to judge Islam by Muhammad. And we are not going to judge Christianity by me. We are going to judge Christianity by Christ. If there's anything wrong Christ did, When the man he answered his prophet, he said to him, well, I dislike to marry a child like the children's, the orphan I have in my house. Do you know how to read? Read carefully. What the man he respond to that perverted prophet Muhammad? He asked him, "Did you get did you get married, Jabir?" He replied, "Yes." He asked, "Is she a virgin or a matron?" What is a what kind of a question this question is? Here you see how low this man is. Why you are asking about the status of the vagina of the wife? Because all the question here is not about who is she. He's not asking who is the woman. He's not asking him, is she good? You like her? He's asking how her vagina now? Is she a virgin? Imagine you meet a friend in a coffee shop and he said to you, hey, did you get married? You say yes. He said, tell me about her vagina. Is it virgin vagina? Or it is not virgin vagina? 
The guy, he said to him, well, uh, no, it's not virgin vagina. It's been used. I replied, oh, she have a unvirgin vagina. He said, why? Why, why? Why? Why don't marry a virgin girl? This is Muslim translation, by the way. So that you might play with her and she play with you like a stupid idiot. What the vagina, which is virgin, have to do with the playing now? Do you see how we get them busted with the translation? It is, yes, it's about a, a virgin, but it's about a child. Because if the woman, she is widow, or a woman she have pre previously married, or a woman she is a virgin, still you can play with her. So what the problem? So do you think if the woman she have a previously used vagina, you cannot play with her? Like that's it? When the women, they lose their virginity, they don't play? This is the religion you are trying to debate us about it. And this is the prophet who says to us, let's go to the angel source. What the playing with her have to do with her having a used vagina or any used vagina? Continue, you will understand. This is not about virgin. This is about a child. And then between two brackets, look, the Muslim trying to make you more understand, brother. Or you might make her laugh. Or she make you laugh. Look how cute. You are so cute, bride. You are five years old and lovely. What a perverted man. He want him to marry a child. So she will make you laugh, brother. And you will make her laugh. I mean, do you see the romantic relationship now? And then I said, my father died leaving seven or nine girls orphans look the word orphans and i did not like to bring a young girl like them so what that confirm muhammad is asking his follow to have a child in his bed i did not like to bring what a girl and this is not my, not my translation. Take a note. A young girl like them. Who? The orphan. So when we call a person an orphan, that means is not able to support himself. He is little child. This is what orphan mean. So I did not like to bring a child like them. I married a woman who can look after them. Do you see it? So don't criticize, you know, criticize by the original sources. Well, this is the original sources. And this is Sahih al-Bukhari. Because I know you will say, you will touch your nose, and then you touch your ass, and then you scratch yourself, and then you take a booger, and then you put it in your mouth, and then you say, I heard nothing. No, you heard it. This is al-Bukhari. Shall I stop here? Because things will go crazy if we continue. What do you think, guys? It's enough? We have now, man, two hours and four. We did not even play five minutes of the video. It doesn't say Jabir. It says Jabir. You are an idiot. Guys, I do not know Arabic. I mean, so why my English is funny? <laughs> So what is my language? It doesn't say Zabir. It says Jabir. Idiot. Abdul, all those Fatha and Kisra, you added them later. And we will make a video soon about it. So everybody will laugh at the Quran. Just wait. I have a surprise for you. Big surprise. All you Muslims, you will, you will shave your mustache and you will move the mustache to different location in your body. Just wait for the coming video. Because yesterday somebody made a request and I promised him to do it. And we will talk about what you are saying. How in the world this is, can be a religion? Oh, we need to take a commercial break. 
Oh, okay. I know about that. Uh, commercial break. Shall we take commercial break? I don't know. Um, let me ask the director, uh, you mad? Uh, you mad? Is it a time for commercial break? You know? Because, uh, you know, he is the director, he is in charge of the commercial, you know? What do you want to say to us? Whatever debate you want. Commercial break! Hello, babies. If you would like to support Christian Prince, please go to Patreon and show your support. www.patreon.com slash Christian Prince. <laughs> we thank you all for your kindly support and enjoy the video. The, the, the funny when they say but but <laughs> this guy's <is> good <laughs> it's really priced as commercial break <laughs> imagine we play this in CNN or Fox News like www Patreon Christian Brands that's so good and by the way, this is from Sayyid Bukhari too. The better yawn can be found in Sayyid Bukhari. Hold on. You see, speaking about donation, have you ever heard of a God saying to the followers, give me a mortgage? Why Allah cannot make gold come from the ground? This is a verse. Mimi Hijab, after he debated David Wood, he went online two hours after, three hours after actually, he did not sleep, the guy, he was so excited because now it's time to collect money. I just showed the Muslims, I can debate David Wood. So he said to them, brothers, sisters, this is Ali Dawa was talking, who is going? We are the one who is protecting Islam. 170 something thousand left Islam last year, brother. We are the one who is defending Islam. Who is going to give a mortgage? And then the, uh, Mimi Hijab, he took the microphone. And he says, who is going to give Allah a beautiful loan? And then Allah will double to his credit multiple times. So we give a loan to Allah by giving it to Mimi Hijab. Do you see the fraud and the scam? What kind of God? He is begging for money. You see, if somebody says, hey guys, help us in donation, he is a human, he need to pay for gas, he need to pay for food, he need to make living, this is Allah. So Allah is, who is going to give Allah a mortgage? So Allah will give him, okay, is that a metaphorical, no, it's a money. And Muhammad, he promised those who gave him mortgage, which is, he will not pay back, that he will be in a corner lot in heaven. He promised them heaven. You see, the Muslim, they said to you that the Pope of the Catholic, he promised people like in a certain time to go to heaven if they give money. And he gave them his signature. This is in the Quran. And this is a fake news. In chapter 5, verse 12, it says that the one who gave Muhammad money, Allah will erase his sin. And this is supposed to was given to the Jews. So according to Islam, the one, you know, erasing sin started with the Jews. If you pay money, Allah erase your sin. Chapter 64, it says it clearly that the one who give Allah a mortgage, Allah will open a credit card for you in heaven and he will forgive you.
Well, my friend, I did not re, uh, hear the whole. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't call this. Those. Uh, those are kids. I did not hear hear the whole thing. I go over the video. I move the mouse. I have no time. I was sitting, you know, and, you know, doing some more work translating the Quran. So I said, let me see what happened yesterday. And I was moving the video, and I stop here, and you know, like uh, I skip most of the talk. Uh, David Wood. Actually, I stopped only twice with David Wood talking. But anyway, here you see how silly, how stupid this religion, and how silly their argument is. In the same time, you know, David would ask him, how come Muhammad, he don't have a miracle? I don't know if he answered. Did he answer that? As I said, I've not watched the whole video. David would, he said to him, how come Muhammad, he don't have any miracle to prove that he is a messenger of God? I'm not sure if he answered that ever. If you go in the Quran, you will find that it's chapter 13, and this is the end of the Quran. Chapter 13, by the way, somebody might say, well, it says chapter 13, so how this is in the end of the Quran? My friend, Muslims agree that the Quran they have today is not according to Revelation. And this is one of the funny things about that the Quran says those who change location of verses or words, they are corrupting the, Quran, the, the, the book. But this is what the Muslims do. So in chapter 13, which I think is a chapter 96 in the original according to Revelation. You can go to according to Revelation and you can confirm the number if I'm wrong. I think it's 96. So chapter 13 in the Quran, which is today Quran, chapter 13, it is not 13. In verse number 7, which means at the end of Islam, Muhammad is almost dead. People are still saying to him, how come you don't have any miracles? Right? Do you see it? So Muhammad now, he spent all his life claiming to be a messenger. And yet Muhammad, he has zero miracle. So you tell me that you have Allah, what law? Where is the law? Where is the law in the Quran? And when Allah, he says, Allah, he cause you to forget the Quran and Allah, he will make a better Quran. Have you ever heard of such a thing? You know, when we speak about Muhammad, he have a law, violence law or not violence law, who care? The end of the day is a stupid religion. As an example, Muhammad, he says, in the case of murder, as long as we are talking about violence law. So do Muhammad have a law for murder? Yes, he came with one. What is that law? Let us see. And remember, this is something coming from his God. This is not Muhammad supposedly talking. This is Allah. So Muhammad, because he's a genius, he said in chapter 2, verse 178, All who you believe in the law of equality prescribed for you in the case of murder. Free for the free, slave for the slave, women for the women. Okay. So, Allah, he gave Allah. But look at this stupid law. If you kill my wife, I kill your wife. If you kill my slave, I kill your slave. So, which means the killer is still free. In the top of that, just to show you that Muhammad is a fraud, if Allah, he gave Allah for murder, have you ever heard of a God? He changed his law a second day. Do we have any Muslim here can explain to us how Allah, he gave Allah, and then second day, he canceled it. Is your God Allah, Joe Biden, he forgot? This is a law in the case of murder. So nothing changed. Murder is a murder. <laughs> Correct? If you ask any Muslim, he will say, this verse is abrogated. Like, why would I abrogate the verse? It is in the case of murder. What happened? Did your God find out that this law is a stupid? To understand what's happening here, we go to the other verse, brother. Chapter 2, verse 106, brother. And then, brother, 
we go to the interpretation of the Quran, brother. Shall we do that, brother? Let us go there, brother. Okay. <laughs> you like my accent, don't you? Like, come on, face it. So, chapter 2, verse 106. What is happening here? Let us understand the Quran, amazing book of Allah. It's for sure coming from the true God. You will not believe it how important this story is. Look what Muhammad was doing. Remember, Muhammad have Allah. And the law is coming from his God. But what Muhammad do, he give a lie in the morning, he changed his mind afternoon. When the disbelievers began to de dry, dared, the matter of obligation saying huh, that one day Muhammad here enjoined his companion to one thing, then the next day he forbid it. Isn't this is a clear proof that Muhammad is mentally ill? Imagine God is making a law. Is that you, CP? No, I don't know. I need to call a friend. Can I call a friend? Is that you, CP? No, it's not me. Is it that can I? Please, the guy is asking, are you CP? Brother sister. Some people they are confused about me. Some people they think I'm CP. In fact, I'm not CP. I'm the total of diet. And I can move with you. I have a beard, I'm trying to grow. I'm with a manure. What do you mean? Is that the CP? Anyway. So listen carefully. There's a God, his name is Allah. Let me draw this one. This one needs to be drawn. It's hard to some people to understand. So I need to use some art, some artistic. It's time for art, brothers and sisters. So you can able to uh, digest the logic of Islam, brother. It's very hard to digest such a teaching. So there is a God. His name is Allah. He live in the blue sky. Allah is not blue, but he live in the blue sky, okay? In the top of the blue sky. This is the blue sky, okay? And Allah is there. I want to draw him, draw him in white, but the background is white, so you will not be able to see Allah. So excuse me, Allah, I have to color you. I will use a color you like. Usually it's pink, but I don't have it. So this is Allah, brother. And he is sitting in the top of his chair, as the Quran says. And the chair is carried by eight angels. Each one of them have four faces. A face of an eagle, a face of a, of a lion, a face of a... I mean, whatever face. And then, brother, Allah, he sent Quran. The Quran come from under the throne, by the way, because Allah doing poo, poo So Allah sending law. This is the law of Allah is coming down. Muhammad is here. Muhammad, he got the law. Muhammad, after he got the law, he kicked the law with his foot. He have two foot, Muhammad. This is the first law. He cook it and he throw it at the Jews. The Jews are here. And this is the Prophet Muhammad Salah. So the Prophet, he kick. The first law, goal. Okay. Now the prophet, he kicked the law of Allah and he put it and he made gold. But the prophet later he said to himself, "You know what? This goal was not my goal." So the prophet he bring the same law and he kick it in the other direction, brother. And now it is time to throw it out of the football stadium goal this is how Allah he abrogate the law second morning so Allah he sent the law and this law Muhammad he don't like it people don't like it it's a stupid law so what we do we send it in the morning we abrogate it in the second day isn't it this is fantastic prophet? I mean the Lord did not even live to the second day. 
Do you think Allah, he wrote his law in beef? And Muhammad was afraid that the law will decay? And those people, they are saying to us, we have a prophet? You will give 37 dollars, 70 million dollars for my art? My friend, if you don't make it right now, 38 million, I'm going to ask Allah to send Allah in the top of you, kick your ass and send you to whatever, you know, whatever, you know? What 37 million? All this beautiful art for 37, and why 37? What's wrong with you, man? Why are you stuck, stuck? You have to say, you have to give us a, a holy number, like 72. 72 millions. So good people appreciate the art. Look at this. I mean, you, who can do this? Look at it. I draw it for you, Allah and Muhammad and the law and the goal and Muhammad Salah, all in one drawing. It takes me two minutes. Go and ask any artist. It's going to take them years to finish one art. Very easy for me. I'm, I'm, I'm gifted when it's come to drawing. You can tell, you know. And look, look at this line. This is this is the sky. Look at the sky here. Just maybe you did not get attention because maybe your vision is not good. Huh? Look at this sky. Did you see here? There's a first curve. Okay, this is a bent in the sky because Muhammad, mother-in-law, she said there. She's heavy duty. Did you see the second curve? This is where Muhammad himself is sitting. It is less curvy because he is less big. Here you notice it is a straight. Why? Because the ass of Allah is a flat. And I change the Muslim to say, I'm making things up, challenge me. How the ass of Allah look like? We go to the hadith. The hadith describe how the ass of Allah look like. May Allah bless his eyes. Uh, ass, sorry. Read, Abdul, read. This is your God describing how his ass is. The Prophet said, said, I have told you so much about Allah the Dajjal, the Antichrist, and I am afraid that you may not understand. Look, Muhammad is afraid now. No, Muhammad, you are brave. Come on, don't be afraid. A Christian prince, he's not afraid from war. He's afraid that his followers are a bunch of idiots and they won't understand. Oh, okay, I got it. I agree with you. The Antichrist is short. <clears throat> Hinted, we heard, one-eyed and an eye sightless. Neither protruding nor deep seated. Do you see the word deep seated? They cannot hear. Later we will find that the deep seated guy is exactly how Allah looks like, except the eye is different. Read carefully. If you are confused about him, know that your Lord is not one eyed. So, what the only difference is? Allah, brother, is short. Number one. He is hinted. I don't know if I'm saying the word correctly. Excuse me. He is worldly heard. And then he confirmed that he is not one eyed, which means he has two eyes. And he is neither protruding or nor deep seated. So he's not deep seated. This is the description of your God. Prove me wrong. We go back now to the Allah Prophet and his God, who he received inspiration from Allah, and he made Allah, and the second day he forbid it. Isn't it this is a clear sign that Muhammad is coming from God? I mean, think about it and be honest. I finally catch CP life and I am dying laughing. Well, as long as you are not a female, I am fine with that. Oh boy. Sometimes you get scared here with comments. When the disbeliever began to deride the matter of abrogation, saying that Allah, that Muhammad, enjoy his companion one thing and this next day he forbid it Allah he decided to refute them look at the look at man this is this is deep 
I mean, think about it. All of you are, you, know, you don't even have a brain. All of you are not smart. Allah is the only smart person here. Look at, look at the refutation. He got them busted in a second. Allah, he revealed the following. And whatever verse is the conditional part, particle and has been revealed containing a judgment to abrogate either together or with its recite or not with the only judgment but it is ritual continues the, what the heck is that i mean and you ask me why sam shamoon he lost his hair because he was reading this Sam Shamon is so smart person, he was looking at it. He said, hey Sam, stop looking at this verse. I came after two hours. I found some hair in his shoulders. I said, Sam, do you want to go out, to go somewhere? He said, no, no, I need to think about this. This is very deep. I came three hours after. I found half his hair is done, is gone. I said, Sam Shamon, you need to go out. It's time to leave, man. He said, no, no, look at this. I was afraid that he would convert to Islam, but it's his hair who converted to Islam. His hair left his head after he heard this, he saw this. He said to himself, like his hair was looking and like, wow. And you know, when you say, wow, hair will come from your head, you know, try it, try it right now. Go to the mirror, say, wow, but big, like, you have to say big, wow, because this is big, you know, this is, this is not like small, wow, you know, it's not like a cat mean meow. It have to be a very big, extremely big. So he looked this and like, what is this? It God revealed and whatsoever verse is a conditional particle, partic particle, what is that? That has been revealed, the verse containing a judgment, we abrogate, either together or it is recital or not that only is that's meant but is recite continues i cannot say more i mean how many of you is in love with the wisdom of this god who send a verse in the morning containing a judgment and law and second day Allah he decide uh, uh, forget <laughs> and actually if you go to the verse it, it's even more hilarious because the verse says that Allah is going to compete with Allah and he will make Quran better than the Quran of Allah which is previously made by Allah should I draw this one too? Okay, hold on, let me draw it for you. Because here it says, read carefully. We bring a better one or similar. Oh, look, what the heck? That's beyond intelligence. This is supreme intelligence. Allah will make us forget the Quran. He will cause us to forget the Quran. And the purpose, brother, to bring something better or similar I will explain to you because all of you are kuffar and you have no idea how amazing Allah is time for art how many of you like my art be honest with me come on by the way I was the number one in my in my classroom and everything in mathematics physics uh, English I, just I don't want to mention the English because it's the, I was the top in English so everything uh, but I, I forgot to tell you I was the only uh, <clears throat> student in the classroom because all the rest of the kids they run away and this is what happened when Allah in the Quran he says Allah is the best of the creators the Muslims they say he's the only creator so how is the best of the creators he was the only one in the classroom like Christian prince. So look what happened here. Allah will send Quran. Let us draw again. It's time for art. I'm going to charge you for this. It's not for free. I'm commercial break. <laughs> 
And by the way, somebody says to me, I noticed that not many people are donating. I said, he said, because you are making your videos unblocked. If you make it a block, then people cannot see unless they donate. I said, my friend, you got me wrong. Yes, we, you know, we, we, everybody need support. But I am not here because of the support. I'm here to teach and to reach out to every human being, the poor before the rich. And those who can support us, thank you very much. And those who cannot, thank you very much too. They cannot anyway. So we are not here going to make a video blocked and make it only available for those who have money. We are not doing business here. My service is for free for everybody. So those who donate or they don't, for me, they are equal. However, for sure, those who support, that's mean they are showing that they mean it and they are truthful. So this is an answer for the one who said. Now we go back to the topic. So Allah, he made Quran. This is the first Quran Allah he made. Look at this art here, look. This is the first Quran, brother. Page number one, page number two. We open the Quran. The Quran is open now. And then Allah, He made a second Quran. Why Allah, He made a second Quran? Because Allah, He want to make Quran better than the first Quran. Or similar. Okay, Abdul. So, this is Quran A. Why this thing is not working? I'm typing in Arabic, hold on. This is Quran A. And this is Quran B. The reason Allah He made Quran A because Muhammad he needs Quran right now. So you can say Allah was like, uh oh, it's urgent. I will send Muhammad Quran. Then after Allah, he sent Quran A to Muhammad. And let us put Allah in his throne. Hold on, we forgot Allah. That will be cheating. We have to mention the one who made the Quran. He's here in the chair. This is Allah. He is sitting on the chair. It's a lazy boy chair, you know, like, you know. Uh, so Allah is sitting there. So now Allah, He sent Quran A and Quran B. But when Allah He sent Quran A, He noticed that Quran A is not that good. So He said to Himself, I'm going to send something better or similar. Better or similar. And that will make it BS. Quran. Think about it. The new BS Quran, better or similar, Allah proving to us that He is going to make Quran which is BS Quran, better than the previous Quran. Which means Allah, He is not Allah, because Allah Quran should be always perfect. But Allah, He found that His first Quran is better, and is not better. He need to fix it. So He decided to make Quran, which is BS, better or similar. Don't take it wrong, I'm not mean anything, by the way, BS. Okay, hello. Come on. So, BS Quran was to fix the previous Quran which Allah He sent just yesterday. I mean, do you see how fast the connection between Muhammad and his God? The God He sent the Quran yesterday. Allah He sent the BS Quran to fix the previous Quran because the previous Quran is not good as the second Quran. What is making it more stupid is going to send a similar Quran. So, why are you are for uh, abrogating the first Quran if it's a similar Quran? <laughs> I 
I mean, have you ever heard of a stupidity like this? Because if you say similar, then it's the same. So you abrogate the Quran and you cause to forget the Quran. And the purpose is to send us the same Quran or a similar Quran? Brother, for sure, Prophet of Allah is a Prophet. Because only Prophet of Allah, Muhammad, he received BS Quran, better or similar. Who can beat that? Nobody. We have to be honest here. Yeah, exactly. It takes the angels 1,000 years to deliver a message to go up 1,000, to go down 2,000 years. So how Muhammad received an order by the morning and then second day he received different order opposing remember it's not just different order it is the opposite order canceling the first one and getting a new one which is opposing the first one when i say stupidity is amazing we mean it and you have to accept it so i'm going to stand here because this will be endless i mean we stop here better than keep going Otherwise, we will stay here for the coming, what, 10 hours. Yesterday, I stayed for four hours in the same day. I mean, we did not even pass 24 hours. And now we are doing another 2 and 36 minutes. So I better stop here with the BS Quran. And uh, from now on, you know, if you say to a Muslim, a BS Quran, he said to you, why you are insulting? Show him the reference. It's your God who said, brother, Allah will make better and similar. This is the BS, Quran. Which reference? Chapter 2, verse 106. 1010. Hamburger. Muhammad is the one who want to teach us uh, Arabic, but his Arabic is horrible. His book is God. Even his God, he agree that he have sent a horrible book and he is going to cause. A, and look at the cheating here. He wants you to forget so you don't remember how stupid it was. I wish I can do that, man. Because sometimes we do stupid things to ourselves too. Imagine. Like, you know, let us say you are married and you do a stupid thing, whatever the thing. And now what you're off, she is angry from you. And now you have a control. You make her forget what you did man that's so good especially if your mother-in-law is behind your wife now you look at them both and you control them forget what I said and you say to your wife hey honey did you hear what I said five minutes ago she said you were not here you were here she forgot everything and now you can give her a better Quran from what she heard five minutes ago. And that the new Quran you will give her is the BS. So with the BS Quran, we say to you, thank you for being here. And I hope you will not have a BS weekend because we have enough BS, Muhammad. And, uh, <clears throat> and we don't want to end with let us uh, go, Brandon. We want to end with the commercial break, maybe, because that is more uh, <clears throat> uh, legal. And by the way, this guy who is telling us about Allah and the law of Allah and Muhammad is a prophet of Allah. I am worried, brother, because soon I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm not sure what I will do there. I can tell you later. But it is kind of... Uh, <clears throat> Interesting. He says, yeah, when you give the adhan, the shaitan, he not only runs, but the hadith says, lahu durat. You know what durat is? Durat is. Now I, that I just taught you something through Allah, how to make fart using your hand. 
So I want every one of you get your children and practice something according to Allah is lawful. You put your mouth on your hand. You blow air in your mouth and don't let it go until you have enough air. And then you blow it all the way until your mouth cannot take it no more. And that is the fart of shaitan. He runs and as he's running, yeah, his fart comes out. Hey brother, is that the fart of this guy was debating David Wood or this is different standard of fart? I'm just asking. I'm not making this hadith. He's not making it. This is hadith, the prophet, the scientist, the logic, the religion, the God. Allah, he told Muhammad this message. He said, how Muhammad knew this? Allah, should I draw this one too? <laughs> Allah, he sent the message to Prophet Muhammad. He says, Muhammad, urgent, urgent, urgent. Muhammad, he opened, he says in the top, top secret, fourth information. Muhammad, he opened the paper to read the letter of Allah, which is sealed by wax. Okay, come on, stamp, top secret. He opened and it shows him how shaitan he fought. And then now the Prophet, he now, he knew that shaitan he fought when Muslim they pray to Allah. And listen to the ahadith, like you first, you know what the deen is about. The deen is about getting the shaitan away from you. So, you know, you go into the toilet, you know, Bismillahi Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubuthi wal khabais. Hey brother, is that a brigaded law? Or we can still use it, like when we go to the bathroom? Because as you see your Prophet, he says something in the morning, he changes. Is that a is that a law or a rule? Work for morning poo poo, or afternoon poo poo? I mean, I'm just asking because time change everything. Allah protect me from these devils. You you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. You're in the toilet. Shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith. Guys, I have to go and get reward. Give me a second, okay? Honestly, I need to go to you know I, because my reward is waiting for me in the bathroom. <laughs> the second you got there, brother, with your left foot, you got a reward, brother. And that person was debating David Wood about logic, about law. What the heck is that? You second you enter with the left foot, you got reward. Hey guys, what do you think if we make a bathroom reward party as Muslims? So we, what we do, like we bring like a thousand Muslim and we rent a bathroom, big one, public one. And all day you do nothing. You get in with the left room, you get out. You get in with the left room. By the end of the day, do you know how much reward you can get? I mean, you will not work for the coming century. You go to the bank, you find your account is full of money. You anymore, that's in a hadith, right? If you don't say the dua, what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tibni that says he plays with your bowels. That is dangerous. The Prophet, he knew what is happening in your anus as we speak. He knew it. And this is what the Quran is saying. Allah will send something better. This is the better. This is the BS Quran. The BS information Muhammad he just received is abrogating the BS previously. And this BS it is about farting and about your anus and what shaitan is doing to your anus. So thanks to Allah and his prophet, otherwise our anus was at risk. But now we know how to protect our anus. We go with the left foot. And then we say certain words. And then the second you say certain words, you will become invisible. Brother. In a hadith, right? If you don't say the dua, what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tidmi that says he plays with your bowels. He plays with your bowels. So you're inside there, you're thinking you're going to be out there in five minutes. He's taking you 20 minutes and you're still not halfway there. You know what? I mean, do you see the music in the background? I don't know. Most of you are not getting attention because your ears is not in musical like mine. I'm thinking to convert to Islam just because of the music. Like, what is that? I mean, look at the music they put in the background. Like, what is that? Ya Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubuthi wal khabais. So Allah protect me from these devils. You, you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. You're in the toilet, shaitan can't see you anymore. He can't see you. You become invisible. This is what happened. I went last time, to, you know, to get my uh, my new gun license. 
I went inside and I made a mistake. I entered to the government building with the left foot. They called me. They called my number. And I went there. I sit in the chair in front of the lady there. And she keep calling me. She could not see me, brother. And I was saying, like, I'm here. I'm here. She heard my voice. She was looking. Where, where's the guy? Where is the guy? I said, I'm sitting in front of you. And she was looking like, where? I said, I am in front of you. And then she extended her hand and she, you know, by, I mean, she don't mean it. She put her finger on my nose because the, this was the voice is coming from my nose. Not because after you, you know, after you became invisible, uh, 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 the only things is working is the holes in your nose, you know, so the voice come from there. So I was saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, you know, so I became invisible. She did not understand me. I said, how, how, how? she got scared. She said, oh, are you a genie or something? I said, I'm not a genie and I am not in the ball. She said, prove it. So I had to get out, entering again, but this time not with the left foot. And I told her, this is me. She could not believe it. And by the way, she became a Muslim now. This is a true story. I have I have witnesses. You know, I have witnesses. I mean, I can give you their names. There are like a thousand witnesses, but I forgot their names because Allah, he gave me the BS Quran. So the second you enter the bathroom with the left foot, I mean, I cannot, I cannot get over those videos. I have to use them every day. You became invisible. It's in a hadith, right? If you don't say the dua, what happens is, the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tidmidi says he plays with your bowels. He plays with your bowels. So you're inside there, you're thinking you're going to be out there in five minutes. He's taking you 20 minutes and you're still not halfway there. You know why? Because the shaitan is going, ooh, ooh, la la. See, the hadith told you, the hadith. I mean, the hadith said what you can say. So I think it's better to stop here. Because as you see, uh, Muslim Islam logic is behind any logic. Muslims are always right. Allah, he make a Quran and then he abrogate the Quran. And then Allah, he confirm, confirm the Bible and then the Muslim deny the Bible. And then Allah, he says, I confirm what is between their hands. And then the Muslim, they say the Bible is corrupted. And then Muhammad, he grabbed the Torah and he swear by the Torah. And then Abdul, he said to you, the Torah is corrupt. And Muhammad, he is respecting the Torah and take an oath in the Torah because it's corrupt brother and it's very confirmed brother that everything in the Bible is not true including the crucifixion to the point that the Quran witness that the Christian they saw Jesus on the cross <laughs> if you are Chinese you have to be proud because there's a Chinese word or sentence I learned since I was a very little kid. I cannot forget about it. It's a stuck with me. He left as a donkey. He never came back as a horse. So if you think you can make Muhammad a horse, you are dreaming. Thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you all. Download my video, share it. It's for you. Take care and God bless. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And God bless you. Have a great weekend.